Irma Gresa, the beautiful beast of Belsen. For the purpose of prosecuting those responsible for the Holocaust, after the Second World War, several war crime tribunals were held. The Belsen trials were held in a courtroom in Lundberg and aimed to deal with the SS men and women who had been captured after Belsen was liberated. However, what astonished the world was that among the guards, including Commandant Joseph Kramer, were several young women who were put on trial for horrifying crimes they had perpetrated at various concentration camps around German-occupied nations. Irma Gresser was the youngest female Nazi hanged in Britain during the Second World War, and although she was only 22 when she was put to death, many people throughout the world could not comprehend how such a young person could have displayed such evil. Due to her cruel treatment of prisoners, she earned the nicknames the Beautiful Beast and the Hyena of Auschwitz. But what is the background of her appalling treatment of captives at some of the most horrifying concentration camps in Nazi Germany? Irma worked as a Nazi concentration camp warden at Bergen-Belsen and as a guard at Ravensbrück and Auschwitz. In addition, she participated in the SS as a volunteer. Gresa, the ideal Nazi Aryan poster girl, with blonde hair and blue eyes, rose to the position of SS Aufseherin at Auschwitz-Birkenau in 1943. She instilled fear and panic in every prisoner who had the misfortune of being sent there during the Holocaust. In search of female victims to abuse, Irma Gresa travelled to the women's camps in Ravensbrück, Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen and perpetrated countless acts of sadism. At the end of the war, her criminal career caught up with her, leading to her arrest, trial and execution by the British. Irma Gresa was one of five children born in the fall of 1923. According to trial transcripts, Gresa's mother committed suicide 13 years after her birth, after she discovered that her husband was cheating on her with the daughter of a local pub owner. Gresa experienced more issues throughout her childhood, some of which she encountered in school. Helena, one of Gresa's sisters, testified that Gresa was severely bullied and lacked the self-confidence to defend herself. Gresa left school when she was just a young teen because she couldn't stand the hardship of learning. She worked on a farm for six months, then in a shop, then at a hospital run by the SS for two years. Alfred Gresa was regarded as a traditional farmer, a devout Christian who often attended church, and an extremely harsh parent who frequently beat his children. He banned his daughters from joining the Bund Deutsche Madel, or any other Nazi group, due to his dislike of the Nazis. In defiance of their father's desires, Irma and Helena both voluntarily joined the BDM. Irma was able to unwind recreationally from her regimented and repressive family life thanks to the activities of the BDM. Because of this, and especially when Irma's horrible deeds and career were made public during her war crimes trial, their father eventually disputed the existence of Irma. Gresa in Auschwitz-Birkenau was shortly elevated to a guard position. She started out as a Ravensbrück Aufseherin in 1942, before moving on to Auschwitz-Birkenau in March 1943. In 1944, she was promoted to Rapport Führin, the second highest position open to female concentration camp wardens. Gresa took part in Auschwitz's selection of prisoners for the death chambers. She was also accused of fondling and raping captors. Irma Gresa had much power that she could inflict on her prisoners with a fatal, sadistic onslaught. There is little doubt that Gresa merits her moniker, the Hyena of Auschwitz, even though it is difficult to confirm the specifics of her atrocities. Researchers like Wendy Lower point out that most of what has been written about female Nazis is tainted by gender and prejudices. Gresa had several romances with different Nazis, including Mengele, according to Auschwitz survivor Olga Lengel in her novel Five Chimneys, written by Wendy Lower. Lengel observed that Irma Gresa would purposely choose the attractive female captors for the gas chamber, out of jealousy and hate. Gresa was known for forcing Jewish girls to serve as her lookouts as she raped convicts, according to research by Professor Wendy A. Sarchi. Gresa also had a morbid fascination with hitting women on their breasts. Sarti claims that Gresa repeatedly beat captives with a whip and kicked them with her hobnail jackboots, as if that weren't enough. The Jewish Virtual Library further said that Gresa ordered the creation of lampshades from the skin of three deceased captives. Irma was also charged with choosing the unfit captives who would die in the gas chambers. Irma was rumoured to personally prod and poke inmates to determine their genuine condition. The quiet farm girl had become a weapon for the Nazis' racist ideology, which gave rise to a cruel tormentor who took part in the Holocaust or the annihilation of the Jews. 
She eventually rose to the second highest rank for female concentration camp guards, but while at Auschwitz, Gressa developed a reputation for being a despicable and violent guard. Many different survivors of the camp, and also Bergen-Belsen, where she was later transported to at the end of the conflict, would testify to her brutality. Gressa was one of the 45 defendants in the Belsen trial of September 1945, which was held at Lundberg, Lower Saxony, and charged with war crimes. She was put on trial during the proceedings first phase, and Major L. Cranfield served as her attorney. On the basis of accusations emanating from the Geneva Convention of 1929 on the treatment of prisoners, the trials were held in accordance with British military law. She was accused primarily of torturing and killing individuals held captive in the camps. When questioned at trial about her violent tendencies, she claimed that all of the evidence against her was nothing but a lie. She admitted that her dog bit someone on the shoulder, but claimed she never purposely set her dog on prisoners. Furthermore, she claimed she did not beat prisoners, although she had seen other guards doing so. Evidence was presented claiming that she was observed in Auschwitz with Dr. Joseph Mengele, the Angel of Death, selecting captives for the death chambers. She claimed that this may have occurred and that when some prisoners fled, she may have battered them. It was claimed that during this particular instance, she punched a prisoner unconscious. One version even said that two young girls attempted to flee from Auschwitz by jumping out of a window, but Gressa shot them dead as they lay on the ground. However, another witness claimed that she did attend selections and that Gressa made prisoners remain during roll call for up to three to four hours. The reports of Gressa's crimes shocked the courtroom, and many were shocked how a young girl could take the lives so willingly of other people, despite being in her early 20s. Gressa and former SS Hauptsturmführer Joseph Kramer, the former commandant at Birkenau, were both dubbed the Beasts of Belsen by the media during the trial. Gressa received a death by hanging verdict following the nine-week trial. Gressa was one of only three female guards to receive a death sentence, despite the fact that some of the charges against some of the other female guards were just as heinous as those against Gressa. Gressa was found guilty of crimes committed at Auschwitz and Belsen, along with eight other men, and was given the death penalty. The other two concentration camp workers were Johanna Bormann and Elisabeth Volkenrath. Gressa was the only prisoner to maintain her defiance as the judgments were being read. Her ensuing appeal was turned down. The night before her execution, Gressa reportedly sang Nazi songs with Johanna Bormann till the wee hours of the morning, according to Wendy Adele Marie Sarti. Gressa was executed on the 13th of December 1945 in Hamlin Prison. The men were executed in pairs after the ladies, each by long drop hanging. She was hanged in Hamlin Prison by British executioner Albert Pierpoint. He said, We descended the steps to the cells where the condemned were waiting. We walked through the line of faces and entered the execution room after a German officer at the entryway to the corridor pushed open the door. Officers were in a standing position. The watch on Brigadier Patton Walsh's wrist was raised. He gave me the signal and I entered the corridor as the chamber heaved with exhalation. I dialed Irma Gresser. Twelve of the inspection hall grills were swiftly covered by the German guards who also unlocked one door. Irma Gresser left the room. I ordered in English, follow me, and O'Neill repeated it in German. She entered the execution room at 9.34 a.m., took a minute to observe the officials gathered around it, and then proceeded to the center of the trap, where I had drawn a chalk mark. She stood solidly on this mark and said Schnell, in a sluggish voice, as I put the white cap over her head. The doctor accompanied me into the pit and declared her dead as the drop plummeted to the ground. The body was removed and placed in a casket, in preparation for burial after 20 minutes. Irma Gresser committed several horrifying atrocities. She was just 22 when she was put to death, therefore her crimes were committed while she was probably around 20. Though her life was considerably different from that of people her age in the current world, keep in mind that it was a life she had always dreamed of having. Gresser took enormous delight in the torture and execution of inmates and aspired to become a guard at the concentration camp. This reveals the vile individual she indeed was, Irma Gresser committed several crimes, many of which are still unresolved to this day. Although she was only 22, she had already perpetrated horrific murders. She was misled by a radical racial hatred philosophy. She had misled herself into believing that she had a typical happy upbringing, when she had gladly taken part in one of the worst crimes against humanity in recorded history. She was the age of the majority of current college seniors 